Sean. Hey, Radcast is on. And welcome to the show, Mr. Jim Zumbo. Gentlemen, I am pleased to be here, and I use that term loosely when I say gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Al Winder. Just want to welcome you to the show. Thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us on a podcast for a little bit. Hey, I'm looking forward to it. There's nothing makes me happier than a cold in Minnesota. If I can't be out fishing, I should be talking about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Hailing from Wisconsin, Jenna Waller. Thank you so much for having me. It's Redcast. Hunting, fishing, and everything in between. Powered by Bo Spider. Brought to you by PK Lures and High Mountain Seasonings. And now, here's your hosts, Patrick Edwards and David Merrill. Welcome to another episode of Radcast Outdoors. I'm one of your hosts, Patrick Edwards. And I'm David Merrill. It's good to be back in this studio, and today we're super excited because we get to have one of our sponsors on the show, technically two, because you're here as yeah. well. We get to have one of our sponsors on the show, and of course, one of my favorites, just because I love the fishing side so much. So, Kurt Reef, owner of PK Lures, welcome to the podcast, man. Hey, guys. It's always exciting to follow what PK Lures is doing because they're always innovating. Pat O'Grady and the team that Kurt has, they're always coming up with ideas and they're testing out things to help you catch more and bigger fish, which is one of the reasons I use PKs all the time. <laughs> and Patrick knows too. I'm a bigger fly fisherman. I always have been ever since I was young, but I have no problem picking up a, a rod and reel. I have no problem putting on bait. I have no problem grabbing a rifle when it's rifle season, even though I'm a bow hunter, right? And I don't discriminate. However, there's a couple rivers here in Wyoming that I tried fly fishing and tried fly fishing and asked the locals and asked the guides and asked the shops and got the flies and beat that water water up and Patrick takes me down there and we throw PK on and I'm killing some big trout, big <laughs> fish and having a blast doing it. He's working on converting me to typically the rod and reel and the fly rod now are always in the truck. And they're both great, but it is really cool. PK is always doing some cool stuff and I have a long history with PK, but still I got to say one of my favorites is the flutter fish. I catch fish everywhere on that thing. And, and guys ask me, me personally, friends, listeners of the show, then they specifically the other two sponsors, which is High Mountain Season and PK, they're like, you're paid to use it. You're paid to talk about it. You're paid. You really like it. I'm like, I've told them several times, if I wasn't affiliated with them, I'd be using High Mountain Seasoning and just seeing the difference in putting any PK on, especially the Red Dot Glow, wherever we go, <laughs> charge that thing up with a flashlight and catch some walleye at night. It's a blast. Yeah. Exactly. So, Kurt, it's really cool to have you on the show. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. We certainly love our PKs, and we're using them quite often because we like to get out on the water. We're transitioning into that hard water season, and PK has been known for a long time for the ice fishing gear. And so I was just wanting to have you on to talk about what's new and what's coming. But first, I think it's really cool for our audience to get to know you a little bit. So, Kurt, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you got into fishing. Yeah, just the, I don't know. I'm a redneck country guy from North Dakota. I don't like being indoors. I got to be outside. That's what got me into this stuff. I graduated from this area. I'm out of Litton, North Dakota. We're just north of the South Dakota state line. We are located on the waters of Lake Hawaii. It's the part of the Missouri River. It goes from uh, down to the Mississippi. There's Lake Hawaii, Lake Francis, Lake Sharp that all hook up to it. We fish a lot of like structure, a little bit of everything. And right now there's still a good live bait fight going on. These fish that we are targeting right now on the Lake Hawaii portion are starting their fall migration from south of Mulbridge down by Akaska, Pierre, South Dakota. They start to transition to move up north around Bismarck where they're going to spawn next spring. We just did a big fishing tournament here on the Missouri called the Big Muddy. That was about two weeks ago. From there, from then until now, fishing has changed. There's been a good bite around Beaver Bay here this last week. There's been a ton of boats out. People are getting out. I'm looking at getting out next Monday, just to test out some different stuff and see what's going on. But if these fish keep migrating north, ice fish is great. But yeah, I, I, I've got a construction business on the side that we do roofing gutters and siding, and then I spend my winters off. And that's what got me going in the PK. I met Pat here a couple of years ago. We took him up to Lake Winnipeg, and I was looking to do to do something as an investment. I wanted to do. I had some ideas I wanted to do, and I ran by Pat. And he, I'm looking at maybe getting out of this. So we worked out a good deal. Within a week or two, I basically bought the company. But from then, PK started in 2009. Pat did a great job with it. He didn't have a lot of social media, internet skill. It was all basically word of mouth. Whatever he did, it was just word of mouth. I got into it, and I'm not much better than that. I don't know a whole lot about computers and stuff, but we've been just 
testing out some new stuff. We started that ice fishing company. I fished the National Walleye Tour competitively in the summertime. This year, I got busy with my other job, so I didn't get to do the whole schedule. I'm looking forward to doing the whole schedule of the NWT next year. We start out in Lake Erie, and I'm actually going out there here in a couple of weeks to test out some new products. Now, I really get a head start on pre-fishing, and I'm just going to get out and do one more big open water trip, I guess. I'm going to be meeting my dad and brother out there. We're going to have a good time testing out some different products. That's awesome. Sounds like a lot of fun. And one of the things that I've always enjoyed over the years is seeing some of the ideas that Pat has come up with. And I know you two collaborate quite a bit and Tim Jenny and all the guys on like, what are we going to come up with next? That's going to be the new big thing. And I know the Ridge Rattler has been an important part of my arsenal over the last year and a half, two years. And I see that you're coming out with a smaller version of that for ice season, which is really exciting, especially for those of us like me who love to hammer the walleye and the trout through the ice. So can you tell us just a little bit more about that product? Yeah. Being a competitive angler, I got to tie on a PK, whatever I'm doing, or if it defeats a purpose of building a, a tackle company, I can go out and use what, what actually works and do as good as everybody else. But the idea was with PK, we're trying to do our own thing. We're trying to be unique and and making something that's not out there yet if you go out and look at something you think what's it's already been done what can we do to make it better anything different with the pk ridge rather we took our crankbait we have a what's called a ridge line gen 2 crankbait it's got ridges on the outside those ridges give it a different vibration as it travels through the water and if you want to trigger fish you basically need three elements you need noise flash and vibration if you can get one of those elements into something that's probably going to catch fish although a bear hook will catch fish don't get me wrong you don't always have to have something pretty and crazy out there it can be just very simple but we took that design of the pk ridgeline crankbait and downsized into a lipless crankbait in doing so i like to use a lot of lipless cranks like i started out with live target and those are very light they're hard to use during open water because they don't have a lot of direction of going down they kind of jig and they do their thing it's a cool product selma has got some cool stuff but they're light they just don't drop fast i was looking for something i can use for open water and ice fishing so what we did we added extra weight to the front we call it a weight forward design by doing so that creates a fast drop alert and we kept those ridges on the side those ridges cause vibration when i'm out there jigging it or ripping it or throwing it back to me i'm going to jig it up and as I jig it up I can feel vibration in my rod. That vibration lets me know that lure isn't followed up. It's actually working. And as it's doing that, it's triggering a strike. The idea is you want to rip it up, get it to vibrate and let it swim down and sink and hit the bottom. It's gonna stir things up. But it's a great lure for open water, cast like a bullet. We use it a lot up in say Devil's Lake and Scott Lee or Castle Weed Lines. Perfect lure for up there. Doesn't matter if it's windy out or not, you can cast that where some of the other ones you just can't cast into the wind. They're just too light. But it works great for ice fishing, great for open water. And then this year we come out with three new products. The idea was we're going for the finicky bite. We're downsizing things on the ridge ladder. This one here we, we come out with, it's called the mini. I did not see it or not, but it basically weighs uh, just under a quarter ounce. And we already have a quarter ounce one, but this is about half the size. Some of that weight, it's just a nice, fast dropping lure. It's got smaller hooks on it. It's designed to catch crappie and perch and all this. But when we were testing it up in Devil's Lake last year, it isn't just up in Devil's Lake, but we have a bunch of areas down here where we have nice walleye and nice perch that share the same water. So you can be targeting perch for an hour, and next thing you'll get a six ball walleye come. So this lure is great for that because it's got the small hooks on it for the perch crappie. But when a walleye bites it it doesn't just nibble on it it basically inhales it if you're going to use this for a walleye bring fires with you because you're going to have to be trying out of just something cool and there's a lot of similar products out there but the big difference on this is the weight forward design and the ribs it's going to vibrate and it's going to have a fast drop with the other one just don't have yeah i've fished before you guys came out with the ridge rattler i used some of the smaller lipless cranks and they just don't have the weight you were talking about those like the rattle trap is one I think about. It was okay, but I can cast the PK Ridge Rattler almost twice as far. It's just and it's crazy. gonna it's gonna dive deeper. Yes, much deeper. And it's fun. I I took it last year 
out off of this, we have this gravel point that would drop off and I was running that ridge rattler right up, right up that gravel drop off and just catching walleye after walleye off of that drop. And I've noticed those predatory fish, they really want to be low in the water column and watch that bait fish. And when that bait fish is getting close to the surface and close to the bank, that's when they want to run up and strike and eat that thing. So it's, if you can mimic that where, where bait fish are, you know, running away, but they're running out of basically maneuverable room, that's when those big fish are like, okay, I've caught you. I'm going for it. And they can corral you. Yeah. And Kurt, I was going to say those smaller ones are going to be really awesome for trout out here in the West because a lot of our lakes, we have predatory and believe me, they are predatory brook trout, splake, browns, fishing that smaller version through the ice in midwinter is going to be great because some of those bigger ones sometimes turn them off, right? Like it's a little too much for them, but downsizing a little bit, I think is going to be just killer for the trout through the ice here in Wyoming, Montana, and the Western States. It's going to be fun to put them to use for sure. Well, one key element on catching fish is that I can be using a red and white daredevil, right? And it's, I can have one size and it just doesn't work. Just sometimes you just go to a smaller size. That's all you really need to do. You can have the right color and everything else, but sometimes just going to a smaller size is all you need to do. So that's why we come out with this mini rig rather, just a different option of what already works great. Yeah. Just as a business owner, what are some tips and tricks you found? You have two companies you've talked about you're running. You've got your competitive fishing. What are some things you've done to bring balance into because obviously r and d new products, bringing that to the market, I know personally what is behind that and the amount of energy, work, stress, strife goes into launching a new product, but you're also running another existing company. And then you talked about you're getting to go do competitive fishing, which is your kind of, sounds like your bread and butter, what you like to do. So how do you balance all this to keep a, a holistic schedule and keep you motivated to, to keep producing new products? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I don't even know how it works start. How do you balance not just one job, but basically and for one, you got to have a good foundation at home. You got to have a good support group. You got to have good friends and family that help you out. Because I can't do this on my own. There's no way. I probably talk to Pat once a week. We just kick around different ideals. But then there's the financial part of this too, where it just in this story, you got a couple million dollars worth of product. That's just what you were just sitting on, waiting to go. And some of it sells better than the other stuff. But to be a we're a tiny company, we're competing against Rapalos and Berkeleys and. Northlands that we're not there, but hopefully someday we'll we'll get a little bit closer. I was just up town the other day at Shields in Bismarck, and what started out being just a two by two area of PKs, we all have got an eight foot section up there right now. Well, that's a big store. That's a good store for us, but it's not one of our biggest. Hopefully, every year we keep gaining tech space. It all starts with having a good support group, and my other company is doing very well, where we can take some money out of that to put in with something. New, like we talked about earlier, we come out with some different ice fish stuff for this year. We're also an open water company. I got to keep coming out with open water products, and I think we're on the right track. We've got stuff that's unique again, and that it catches fish. But trying to balance everything, yeah, it's just chaos sometimes. There's nothing worse than being a competitive fisherman. That's probably the stressful job you can have. <laughs> but so just going to keep moving forward and doing the best we can. I picked this one up the other day, and as an entrepreneur, business owner, if the things you do in your downtime don't revitalize and re-energize, you're not going to make it very long. It's just, you know, it sounds like fishing, even though it causes you some stress, it's your getaway from the fishing lure company, right? Yeah, no, I just love the outdoor part about being a competitive angler. We get to go somewhere. And we'll be up in Green Bay. We'll be out in Erie. This August here, we took a couple of nephews out to Fort Peck, and we just chased trout, lake trout. That was a blast. If you want to go to a cook catch 25 to 30 inch Lakers, Fort Peck is it. And it's only six hours only, but it's six hours from us. And we ice fish, big and last mountain, plus all around here. Going to these different bodies of water, you think it's a little vacation, but it's really not. Everywhere I, I might go, I pick up different things I need to do what I do with PK, where it's with different colors, different bodies of water, fish react differently to certain things. So as we're going around ice fishing, open water fishing, I'm picking up things. I might go to somewhere and just tank and just do terrible, but yet I picked up some skills there or I learned something new that I can take somewhere else. So it was very beneficial to actually go to this event. It's just, we're always learning. And that's something we got to do to keep things moving forward. I was going to ask you this later in the podcast, but I think I'll ask it now is if you're talking to somebody who's looking at the market 
and looking at different options. So that I mean, you talked about Northland, you talk about Berkeley, Rapala, all those big companies, and then PKs. Tell them just if you, if you were to tell them one thing about why they should buy a PK, what would that be? What is the one thing you'd say? This is why you got to have PKs. This is why you should try this. I'm not one to say that PK is a catch-all. It isn't. Should PK be in someone's arsenal? Why not? We've got something for every body of water. We've got something for every water type, almost every species of fish. We're a North Dakota veteran owned. Why not give us a try? I know some guys are stuck on certain things. That's the hardest thing here that this little industry is to get people to try something new. A lot of older guys have a talk box that's full, right? They don't have any need or any desire to buy anything then they've got what works they've got what taught them their biggest fish we're targeting the younger generation where we sponsor the high school fishing league in our state here it's basically like you're a bass circuit but we try to target where we try to cater to the younger generation that's the guys that have a tackle box that's empty they're looking to fill it up and they're more eager to try it and they might not have as much experience on the water so if we can get them a PK in their hand and they can catch their first big fish on it, they're hooked. And that's a lot of guys' big mistake is that they're not willing to try something new where they might try a certain crankbait work. They might try a particular crankbait that they like and they'll put that crankbait on for six, seven hours. And if they don't catch a fish, they'll just, at the end of that fishing trip, they'll say the fish just didn't bite. That, not, that probably isn't the case because they were open to try something new. It can be a benefit. But uh, something new, and I would say try it. You got something for basically everybody. Yeah, and I would echo that for sure. Like this summer, we were, I took my family up to Keyhole and I did a podcast on that. And my son and my dad and I, so it was three generations of boys in, in the boat. And we wanted to go out and get after the walleye. The wind blew for a couple of days where we couldn't get out to where I knew the walleye would probably be. So we focused on crappie and pike and other things. And then when we were able to get out to where the walleye were, that PK Dakota disc was awesome. And my dad's kind of that older guy you're talking about, Kurt, where he's 80 years old and he has the one thing that's always worked for him. He's got one of those crawler harnesses that Northland made that he loved. And Ben's on the other side of the boat with this PK Dakota disc out fishing grandpa. So that was pretty cool. (laughs) He was having fun. He's catching fish after fish. And we were done pretty quickly. It didn't take very long once we could get out to where they were at, but that that Dakota dish shines and that PK wobbler and a lot of your open water stuff, man, I'm just like, you have as a fisherman, you're like, okay, it's a crawler harness. It's not just a crawler harness. And what's really cool is for me, I've been able to put a lot of fish in the boat this year using that. And I was going to tell you this story too. I have a, a nephew, he lives in like the Denver metro area, right? So real busy part of Denver, doesn't go fishing, mostly plays video games. I had him come up here to Boyson Reservoir with me, and we went out and we were pulling a PK Wobbler. And I like the one that's got the pink with the kind of silvery look to it. And we were using that, and we were, seriously, we were going about a half a mile an hour to three quarters of a mile an hour and about three feet foot of water right off the edge of some weeds and some kind of dirty water. And we had our limit in 45 minutes. It was so much fun. He had a blast. And so I would just echo that. Like, why not try something different? It is fun to, especially in the summer, like you don't have to use the same crawler harness you've been using for 25 years. You can try some of these new things that give off a different vibration, a different flash, have a little different action to them, and they work really well. Thank you for putting those out because they, they certainly helped us this summer quite a bit. That PK Wobbler and that Dakota disc, I mean, those are some cool products that we settled the cross. I grew up rigging or pulling live beef. That's all I ever did. Back then, there was a Colorado blade and there was an Indiana blade. And you would put on different beads, different different colored beads, different colors, and just mix and match until you got something that was just cool. And when Pat first designed that PK Wobbler, it was basically out of a piece of balsa wood. And he had filed that out, and there's one side that's flat and one side round. And when we tested it, it was the rounded side, which is the opposite side that it is now. It's the rounded side facing your fishing pole, and that just wobbled back and forth. Probably went about 20 degrees that you sped up. It just wobbled faster. And we go, oh, that's cool. It's a, it's a float that has action. So let's just call it the PK Wobbler. It just made sense. But then when it goes into production, it goes from balsa wood into full and totally changed the action and I panicked because I got this P 
piece of foam back. And I think I was out in Green Bay or somewhere and I was just putting some on and it basically wasn't doing anything. It was like pulling around a box. And I'm like, God, I got a lot of these. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. So we eat out around and I got this idea, let's just flip it around. So now we have the part that's flat, that face of the fishing pole. And that turned it into a multi-directional floating spinner. That was by accident. Now we got stuff that in multi-direction. It spins multi-directional. Whoever thought of that? I wasn't thinking of that. And But that's what it does. And we got the patent for that. And that's ours. When it all happened by by luck. But as a kid growing up pulling spinners, I thought, how else can we do a spinner? It's been done before. And then Pat designs this thing. And then we kind of work together to make what it is. But that TK Wobbler, I cashed two checks on the National Walleye Tour with it. Plus a bunch of other checks that fishing does different other fish tournaments. But... What a cooler. I think it does better in mid summer, more on the Great Lakes. It just covers a bigger body of, it just, as it spins, it displaces water in a bigger area. Where, say, you go out the Lake Erie, it's always big blade, big stuff, right? As it spins, it's covering an area that's bigger than an actual spinner would, if that makes any sense. And then my dad and brother were out here two years ago, and they were just messing around. When you go out here, it's always crankbait, big stick bait, reef runner. Bandit, Bagley, those do great it out there. So if you're going to go to Erie, if you're going to drive 14 hours, kind of put the old lures up. It just makes sense. Why do you want to go out there and mess around with something that probably isn't going to catch a fish when you only have a couple days of fish? So they went out there and they're pulling big, big bait bandits around. And then my dad, the dad, he puts on the TK Wobbler in front of it, thinking, oh, whatever, let's see what it does. That first day they went out, they had it on one pole. My dad outfished my brother like five to one with a wobbler in front of a six feet bandit, right? I, I don't know if it turns it into a scatter wrap where it's got a little different action or something, but by the end of their trip, they had a wobbler in front of every bandit. So that was a super cool. That's why we're going to go out there next week. We're going to play around with it tomorrow. And we're going to put wobbler in front of crank, and then we have a different rattle float coming out next year. We're going to play around with that, and then uh, we got a glide beat we're working on for next year. And we're going to play around with that and see what comes of it. But that TK Wobbler is super cool. We pretty much sell them all year around, even in February. We got Wobblers going out the door, which I think is just neat. And then that TK Dakota disc is just a round disc about the size of a quarter. We got the idea of that's the full thing around. It just goes side to side and it causes vibration. It's kind of like a swimming action. Killer lure up on Devil's Lake. I don't think it goes by a fish that it doesn't catch. It just really does very well up in Devil's Lake. Lake Hawaii out here. I think it, in, I think almost anywhere I've ever put that on, I've caught fish. Super cool lure. Cheap. Doesn't cost a lot. But if you want to tie your own, we have all the parts where you can buy them online. You can you get a pack of 12 discs for five bucks. Very effective lure. And again, it's been done. How can we make it different? And we did it again with the TK Dakota disc. Awesome. Yeah. Like I said, it worked great for me this summer, but I want to go back to this. You've got some new micro stuff coming out for this winter season besides the Ridge Rattler. Can you talk about those other two products? Because I think those, especially around here, because we've got, we got the trout that I know will eat them. We've got the walleye, the crappie, the perch, all those different things. Just highlight some of those new micros that you got coming out. All this started out now. About two years ago, I fished heat called the NAIFC. I think it's still having a lore, but it's basically a special pan fish ice fishing circuit where they target bluegills. The area where I'm at, we don't have any bluegills. I don't. I think I caught my first one year probably two years ago. They're a very aggressive fish, like a crappie, but a lot smaller. But anyway, we were fishing late in Iowa. Went down there and I brought the PK Predator tongues in. It's a one ounce tongues in. It's got a blade on it, a treble hook. We were fishing, and I could see them on my live stream, and there was a bunch of them down there. They wouldn't fight. And so I go online, and I'm trying to figure out how to catch a bluegill, and the first thing I said is lighten up your line, you know, go to like a two-pound test, and I did that, and I think our PK Predator tongues then was a little too big, so we come up with the idea of let's drop the hook from the actual lure to get, get, get like space out there, and then that seemed to work, start to catch fish that came up with the idea of let's just make a real small tongues in how how small can we go we got it down to a 130 second out tongues in and this is called the metagoshi rig that would that all came from the idea of bluegill like the bugs they like eat. so the idea this is this lure is bait chasing bait when you stick something on the hook 
it's basically that book is going to be following that lure like bait chasing bait down there real cool idea we used it a little bit last fall on devil's lake we were catching jungle perch with this and then we would have walleye come through i think our biggest walleye we caught was about three pounds the chain did not break i'm like i'm sold this is an awesome lure fluvial crappie perch and walleye but i'm not saying this is a walleye lure but if you have one come through you're going to be okay with it you know set the hook right and then as i'm going around to the different sporting shows i'm thinking that hey i got cool small spoon with the drop chain and i'm showing guys and they're like you know what would be cooler than that a treble book got it and i'm like i can't please these guys so what i did i come out with a tk micro spoon same 130 second tongues in but we put a size 20 treble hook on it that way i got all the anger happy i think i covered every bait yeah we got six colors of each real cool lures shield was down in kirkwood has them and there's a bunch of other stores that are slowly picking them up but there's something new so if you don't have it at your store, ask for it that, that they order it or check it out on our website where we're fully stocked. When you showed me the one with the treble hook, what comes to mind is Patrick has a, a fish camp and we like to drill a couple holes and get the kids out there. I think tip it with just a little bit of sucker meat and we're fishing in usually water on Bass Lake or Lake Camelot or even some of the bigger lakes around here. But those would be perfect size when we're fishing some of those panfish through the ice. And the the best part with the kids is those fish come up and a panfish looks like it's 40 pounds on that. And it's, it's almost like a video game for the kids. They're used to watching a screen and having a controller. The remote control is the rod and you're sitting in here. And it's, it's quite comical when the kids are like, just bite it, just eat it, it's right there. And they're wiggling <laughs> up and down. So those will be absolutely perfect for that. And this whole ideal again, do it came from, this is for finicky fish. You get these perch crappie that don't want to bite. Go to the Metagoshi rig where there's a drop chain. Getting that bait away from the hook. Getting the hook away from the lure can be all the difference to get these fish to strike. Yeah, especially in that midwinter when they get really selective. <laughs> That's probably one of the hardest times for me is like ice fishing in the middle of winter, especially around here, it gets super cold and it seems like the fish get pretty lethargic and they get into those bite windows and anything that you can do to tip the scales in your favor is something you want to do because it can be really challenging at certain times of year. I love early ice. I love late ice because it's usually hot and heavy action, but sometimes that midwinter bite, you got to have stuff like that because it just gets a lot more challenging. So tell us as far as other stuff coming up, because you were talking about next season what can people expect from pk this next year besides these for ice fishing but maybe for open water coming up the big trend right now is forward facing sonar everyone's talking about it everyone's fishing with it you got john hoyer and max wilson they're just dominating the competitive fishing world using forward face sonar how do we be a relevant company if we don't have something we can use with that we've got our with this crankbait what we're doing for next year we're making a glide bait everyone's using them it seems and we're going to jump in what we're doing we're trying to make something different again trying to make it unique just a couple of hints here we're going to be keeping our ridge rather profile the shad style but downsizing that a little bigger eyeball a little bigger treble hook and then we're trying to put a little blade on the back i don't know if i should say that yet or not it's going to be different. It's going to be cool. I've got to test it out a little bit to fine tune it, but it's in the works. You'll see it next spring. But that's for the forward facing, the casting guy, and then for the guys that want to rig. We have them on our website now. It's a rattling float. It's a little float that's got leaves in it. We have that as an option if you want to tie your own. And we also have them tied up on our already popular reef rig, Dakota Disc, and the Wobblers. We call it a Pro Series. So all the Pro Series has a rattling float on it just another different option but if you pair that rattling float with that Dakota disc man it's just going through the water shaking that thing up making noise did really good up in the last mountain just get your heads up you got some pictures I'm not really showing me this time of the year yet because this time is the dead time for spinners but we got them ready to pull the trigger next spring when we kick off again that's exciting and man it's been really fun to have you on to talk about some of the new offerings and some of the new things with PK Dave and I will be out using them. Of course, it's fall here, so walleye mode is on for me and for the big trout too. And this is the time of year to really hammer those fish. I was going to tell you this last November, I was out with that baby bass Gen 2 
a ridgeline crankbait and we were fishing on Boyce and, and it was nasty like today. It was cold, except for today it's raining. Then it was snowing. It was right before Thanksgiving, super cold. The wind was up, but we were trolling the ridgeline cranks and we filled the cooler with these nice 20 to 24 inch rainbow trout. And it was a lot of fun. So again, guys, if you haven't tried PKs out, go to pklure.com. You can get just about anything that you want nowadays. We used to just be basically just a couple of spoon products, but now you got cranks, you got the lipless cranks. You can get those spinner type things for the summer for walleyes and for trout. It's just, it's just such a diverse product line now. And especially getting into winter, it's like I tell everybody, you got to have a flutter fish in your box. You got to have PK spoon. You got to have the PK predator. And I really like that new PK rattle spoon as well. That thing shines casting as well as jigging. So get those in your box for sure. Yeah, we're, we're up to 600 skews right now. When I bought the company from Pat in 2018, we we're about 240. So we've more than doubled the size of the company with just product. And we got more stuff coming out next year. So look to see about 625 SKUs by next spring. That's a good foundation. I think got a lot of species covered. Doesn't mean we're done. My end goal for PK, it seems maybe silly, but one lure that I can think of that in everyone's tackle box is probably a daredevil what has been around since 1909. They're still selling them. You can still buy my goal for PK when I'm dead and gone here. Who knows what that's going to be? But PK is like the old daredevil. Hopefully everyone's got one of their tackle box, right? That'd be cool. Yeah. I think that's a really good goal to have. And I was going to ask you one other question before we get off. We talked to all of our guests about what they like to eat. We interview a lot of people that hunt and fish, obviously. So as far as fishing goes, what's your favorite fish to eat? And what's your favorite way to prepare it? My favorite is that salt silly, but I've been to Alaska, I think uh, half a dozen times, out of Rangel and Sitka, and halibut. Halibut by far is my favorite. I'm actually looking forward to going up there within the next couple of years. I'd like to go up maybe on a moose hunt, maybe get fishing in too. That'd be a nice hunt that's on my bucket list. But I got 128, 28 pound halibut with my best, and everything over 75 pounds, we would shoot with a 410 shot, and I just got hooked. I think that was just so neat. But how to cook it? Grind up some corn flakes. Just grind it up into a powder. Take your halibut steak, maybe a four by four steak piece of halibut. Roll an egg, roll it in the powder. Then you pan fry it on the stove. Pan fry it in like olive oil. Get both sides cooked. Then sprinkle it with some Lowry seasoning salt. And that's my favorite. That sounds good to me. David and I both like halibut. Patrick already knows that we do halibut. We Instead of four by four, we do chunks, like one inch cubes. And that's how the wife likes to cook it. But I will challenge you. We'll send you some high mountain seasoning and we'll get that Lowry's off your stove and <laughs> turn the high mountain on your halibut next time. Yeah. One of the things we love doing, I know you catch a lot of walleye and panfish, but the cowboy Cajun seasoning from High Mountain is so good on any kind of white fish. Like we've been pan frying walleye fillets and perch fillets with just a little bit of that on there and just a little bit of butter or olive oil and then just doing like fish tacos. Oh my gosh, man. It's so good. So good to eat. So we'll have to get you a bottle of that and give it a shot. Yeah, I'm a big seasoning guy. I like my steak. Heavy on seasoning. Yeah. One of these days, you're going to have to come out and fish with us here in Wyoming. We got Boyston Reservoir right here. And we also have a little lake with a, some bass and some tiger muskies in it. So we'll have to get you out here and maybe you can get one of those Wyoming hunts. That would be a reason to come out here too. You can knock both of those things off your list. There you go. All right. Again, everybody go to pklure.com. Check them out. Support again, the veteran owned business. Kurt's a great guy. We're just so th thankful for him to be supportive and believe in this show because early on when you get started, it's really tough. <laughs> and he was one of the, one of the guys that really stepped up. So we just really appreciate you and hope everybody goes out and again, like that daredevil analogy, get a PK in your box. All of us have our favorites, but definitely get a few of them in the box. They, they will produce some fish for you. So again, Kurt, thanks for coming on the show, man. Really appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for having me. Thanks again for listening to the Radcast Outdoors podcast. We hope that you've enjoyed the show. If so, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this podcast and subscribe, share, and give us a five-star rating, which really helps other people find the show. You can find all of our shows, recipes, giveaways, videos, and much more. Please help support the show by purchasing a Radcast Outdoors shirt or hat. Please don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We also have a Radcast community on Facebook called Radcast Nation, and we'd love for you to join in the conversation there. And of course, please help support our sponsors who make this show possible. 
Thank you again to PK Lures, Bow Spider, and High Mountain Seasonings. Until next time, get out there and enjoy the outdoors.